brings you total news coverage. Live with Mark Allen, Molly Hughes, and Storm Team 2 coverage with Carl Nichols. You're watching 2 News at 5. When a train hits a car, the outcome is always the same. The train wins, the car loses. Still, too many of us take the gamble, risking our lives, trying to save just a few minutes time. For the next three nights, we will try to change your mind and possibly save your life by taking you to the point of impact. We begin with a story nearly 40 years old, but for those who tell it, their lives have never been the same. It was March the 18th, 1959. And I can remember her walking up the street that day with my sister Sandy. And that was the last time I saw her. Eight Girl Scouts from Beaver Creek Township and two of their mothers had just left the library. They climbed into a station wagon and were on their way home. I'm still trying to back in my head why I didn't go. Mm -hmm. And it pops into my head if the car was too full. There were also three other members of Troop 133 who were supposed to make the trip that day, but didn't. A friend of mine that lived down the street didn't go to school that day, and I decided not to go. Played hooky from Girl Scouts, had my uniform on. Another friend and I chased the car out of the parking lot trying to flag them down, but um, they obviously didn't see us or hear us, and they went on. And by those simple twists of fate, Kathy, Candy, and Angela are alive today, because eventually, the station wagon arrived here. It's a bike path today, but 39 years ago, it was the railroad crossing at Route 35 and Factory Road. We'll never know if they saw the train, but by the time the engineer saw them, there was nothing he could do. The car was hit and it exploded. It just exploded the car. Bill Scroggy was one of the first rescue workers yeah, yeah, on the scene. Help. Somebody came up and said, we better get some help here. So I came back and got on the the mic and called it to Elmer, which was our dispatcher back there. I said, you better send some doctors and, they, and some ambulances because we got a bad one. I received a phone call uh, after it happened and I went down and there was not much that could be done. When I see the scene, there's all the bodies laying out covered in this off, off the road there. And people all over everywhere. To this day, I still cannot forget as I cross this road probably at least twice a day it's there in my mind even after all this time the memories and the pain are still there especially for the families I missed her every day of my life she was my right hand she helped me with the other children she was an angel and I couldn't face the rest of my life without that child, but I did. When I think about her each year, uh, she'll be 51 in May, and I still mark it on my calendar, and I still think about her, and I think about how life would be if she were still here. I was very close with Patty Lipinski. She was, we were very close, and I remember that afterwards, her mother gave me her Easter dress to wear for Easter, and it was, um, it was tough for the family people. Really hard. It was hard for everybody. There was so many, so many mothers and daughters, mm -hmm. teachers. I don't wonder why me. I wonder why them. Now, as you saw, the railroad tracks where the accident happened are now a bike path, a place where people can come and enjoy life. And soon there will be a memorial park built on the 13 acres of land that adjoin the bike path. It's a park that will be dedicated to the memories of eight young girls who never got to experience life or grow to their full potential. If you'd like to help build that park, you can make donations at any Fifth Third Bank in care of the Beaver Creek Community Park Girl Scout Memorial Fund. Construction will begin very shortly. Hopefully they'll have it completed by this time next year, which of course will be the 40th anniversary of the accident. Most train car accidents can be prevented if we follow three simple rules. Look, listen, and live. And over the next three days, we will bring this point home by literally putting you in the driver's seat, strapped into a car in the path of 500 tons of moving steel 
with no way to get out. It's a lesson that could save your life. And tonight at 11, we'll continue our journey through the eyes of the man in the train, the person who sees the accident unfolding in front of him with no way to stop it. A very powerful message tonight on 2 News at 11. Roger. The railroad industry is growing in Ohio. In fact, we now rank fourth nationally in the number of rail cars handled. But we also rank in the number of car train crashes, something this engineer knows all too well. Is, uh, it's traumatizing. It really is, you know, and we're affected greatly by that. In his 32 years of working on the railroad, John Demetrio has been involved in 15 crossing accidents and at least five accidents with pedestrians. When they proceed around those gates, they're playing Russian roulette because they, 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 really, can't, they really can't judge the speed of the train. When you see that blazing headlight off in the distance, it really is deceiving. Not only how far away it is, but how fast it's really traveling. Most people don't realize the speed of the train, they don't understand the type of forces that they're competing with. If they knew that if you get hit by a train, your chances of dying are 40 times greater than if you collide with another car. 500 tons of steel. That's why it takes a train traveling 55 miles an hour, more than a mile to come to a complete stop. A fact that is deadly if you take the gamble and try to cross in its path. With you know, cars, e even, even large trucks, it's almost as if they're not there, you know. The only way you know sometimes is you visually see them. Well, I've done everything I could do um, in, a, in an emergency situation, that is, apply the brakes in emergency, the train brakes, and beyond that, I'm powerless, you know, and, um, and uh, everything is uh, fate beyond, beyond that point, you know. Um, it's, it's totally out of my hands, out of my control. The train crews are victims in these crashes, too. These are men and women out doing their job when suddenly a motorist puts themselves in a position that the train cannot avoid. In fact, some engineers who've been involved in fatal crashes simply aren't able to continue working instead in the rail yard where they don't come in contact with motorists. Now that you've seen it through their eyes, tomorrow we put you behind the wheel, strapped into a car, stuck in the path of a five. We continue our special report, Point of Impact, by putting you belted in behind the wheel, and the train has left the station. every day all over Ohio. People rushing to beat a train and the consequences can be deadly. Every hundred minutes in this country a train collides with a car or a person on the railroad track. And nearly every time the person does not come out of it alive. 190, uh, apply the blue flag protection force please over. So today we want to show you exactly what happens when a car and a train meet. The impact, the force, the destruction. Working with the railroad and a number of law enforcement agencies, we set up this mock accident. Now, to help you better understand the value of rail crossing safety, we're about to do a special simulation that's going to put you in harm's way in a way you've never experienced before. Using several of these special cameras, we're going to put you literally in the driver's seat of a car in a potentially deadly situation, a car sitting in the path of 500 tons of rolling steel. Would you want to put another one right across this area here? Ten cameras, one car, and one train, with you in the driver's seat. Amazing. That's uh, double fatality right there, without a doubt, without a doubt. 
And here is what's left of the car, not much, as you can see. Right down here, this is, or was, the actual point of impact. This is where what's called the knuckle, uh, that coupler on the front of the engine, this is where it first slammed into the passenger side. And obviously, for anyone inside a vehicle like this, uh, they wouldn't have had much chance. Now, something we noticed in the course of doing this series, from the motorist perspective, it can be very deceiving when that train is coming at you. It really depends what angle you're seeing the train from. And tonight at 11, with the help of the State Patrol, we'll take a further look at that as Point of Impact continues. Molly? Some people are willing to gamble. They try to beat the train across the tracks, but some of them lose, and lose big. See, it's hard to believe anybody's willing to take that chance because physics tell you those trains aren't going to be able to stop. Well, that's fair and that, simple. That. It takes a train nearly a mile to come to a complete stop when it's traveling at 50 miles an hour. When that train is coming your way with the headlight blazing, it looks like it's a lot further away. But before you know it, Now, one thing we learned is just how deceiving it can be to see a train coming down the tracks. Look at it from this first angle with the train coming right at you. Now, from a second angle, more to the side. There is really a difference in the perspective of the driver. Statistics show that most of these accidents happen within 25 miles of your home and with trains moving 30 miles an hour or less. People get a little bit comfortable. They don't stop and check and make sure that uh, there's trains not coming, but uh, you know, a car can stop in a relatively short distance, but a train absolutely cannot. And as you might imagine, it took weeks of work and the cooperation of a number of people and agencies to bring you this special report. We will wrap it up tomorrow at 5 when we take you behind the scenes of Point of Impact. We have taken you for the first time to the actual Point of Impact, a very important project but a massive undertaking as well. So tonight we wrap up our special report by taking you behind the scenes to show you how all the people and the pieces came together. At that point, they will do a dry run. After months of planning, the day was finally here. Gathered around this crossing in Warren County were representatives from the railroad, the State Highway Patrol, Carlisle Police and Fire, the Warren County Sheriff's Office, and dozens of Channel 2 employees. Two tracks over here are hot tracks. We may be running traffic through here. Safety is the number one priority today, so everything starts with this briefing. But then it's time to put things in motion. We'll set the car, we'll back up, then we'll, when everybody's in the clear, we'll finally release him and we'll do the crash. First, the road is closed to all traffic. Then our photographers move in. Get the wheels going. Seven photographers stationed at all angles around the crossing as the car is slowly rolled into place, brought to rest in a specific spot so we'll know exactly where the car will go after the impact. Now to help you better understand the value of rail crossing safety, we're about to do a special simulation that's going to put you in harm's way in a way you've never experienced before. Using several of these special cameras, we're going to put you literally in the driver's seat of a car in a potentially deadly situation. A car sitting in the path of 500 tons of rolling steel. With everyone in place and out of harm's way, the engineer is given the signal the train begins to roll. <laughs> 